Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Ask Rob Trek where I try to answer your questions from the comment sections of my videos and if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright so today I have three questions and I put them down in the description below and they're indexed so if you want to skip to a question you can do so or if you just want to read it for yourself uh, it'll all be there. Uh, but the first question today is from Ben Hauer and hopefully I pronounced that correctly. And he has a rather lengthy question about the Godox flashes and triggers. And I think basically I can answer this in two parts. Uh, the first one is, you know, how do you set the trigger to fire the flashes without sending any of the settings? Because normally on the trigger, you set the uh, power and the mode, like you might set it to manual to fire it like half power, or you might set it to TTL. So the, and the flash will fire in TTL mode. But he's asking, how do you set it so that uh, it only fires the flash, but you can change the settings directly on the flash itself? Uh, that's the first part of the question. The second part is, uh, basically, he's not able to set the trigger to fire below 1 1 28th power. But the flashes, like this V1 and 8200, can go down to 1 2 56th power. And actually, you can do that on the triggers. You just have to go in the menu and change the settings. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this on the X1T trigger as well as the uh, X-Pro trigger. And uh, you can see right now, the trigger is set up to fire the flash at 1 128th. And if I push the test button, that's what I get. But if I change the power to something else, say 1 32nd, you can see it changed on the flash. I push the test button. Everything is firing just fine. But if I want the trigger to just fire the flash without changing the power, I have to go into the menu or the function menu. So I press and hold the top button here. And then I want to go to function 9. So I'm going to use the wheel to go up here to function 9. Hit the group button. And then turn that on. Hit the group again. Hit the uh, channel button and to go back out. And now you can see that the display says app and not like all the different groups. And if I push the test button, the flash is going to fire whatever it's set at. So if I change the power down to 1, 2, 56, which I think was part of your question, now when I fire the flash, it's only going to fire the flash at 1, 2, 56, or I can move it up to whatever other power I want. And now the flash is set for 1 8th, and the trigger is not changing the output power of the flash. Now with that said, your question also indicated that you weren't able to get your trigger to fire this flash at 1 2 56. So let's put this back into regular channel mode. So I'm on function 9. Click the GR button. Roll the wheel. So now it's off. Click the GR button. Click the channel button. And now we're back in uh, trigger mode. And now if I hit the test button, you can see that uh, the flash power has changed. I'm going to change the power down to 1 1 28th and fire. And you can see the flash is at 1 1 28th. But we know that this flash can go to 1 2 56. So we need to make the trigger to fire this flash at 1 2 56. So we go back into the function menu. We press and hold the GR button. And just roll over, I think this time, none of this is documented too well. Uh, but on my trigger, it's function number 5. Hit the GR button and roll the wheel until you see 1, 2, 56. Hit the GR button, hit the channel button. And now, if I hit the group A button, I can change this down to 1, 2, 56. And now, if I fire the flash you can see it changed to 1, 2, 56. Okay, now, same thing, except this time with the X-Pro trigger. And as you can see, I have it set up to 1, 1, 28th power. But I can go in and I can change it to, say, 1, 64th. Hit the test button, and you can see the power has changed. But as of now, I cannot go below 1, 1, 28th. So I have to go into the menu. And just roll down here to step, click the set button, and change that to 1, 2, 56. Let's go back out. And now, if I go into uh, group A, 
you can see I can roll it all the way down to 1 256 power hit the test button and the flash is changed to 1 256 now if I want the trigger to only fire the flash but set the power on the flash and it, and not have the uh, trigger set the power I can go into the menu and scroll down here to let's see shoot click the set button go down here to app click OK or set and go back out and now you can see it says app here and now if I fire the flash it's at 1 256 but I can change the power to say 1 8 power and fire the flash and you can see it's it stays at 1 8 power so the app function basically turns the trigger into a dumb trigger so that then you can control the power of the flash directly on the flashes but also apparently there is a Godox app for like your phone where you can control the power of the flashes through your phone and then just use the remote trigger on your camera to fire the flashes based on the settings that you have on your phone. And that's not something I've ever done before, so I won't be able to answer any questions on that. But just be aware, that's why they call it app and not like just dumb trigger or something else. All right, the next question here is from uh, Colin Cluley, and it says, I uh, currently still use my old Pen F and the M1 Mark II. I normally take landscape and seascape photographs. Uh, that's my main interest. If I buy the new OM1, would I notice a great deal of difference in the quality of my images over the old Mark II, which I still consider to be excellent? Also, any thoughts on the 12 to 200 lens? I already have the 12 to 100, which is brilliant, as are all my Olympus lenses. Okay. Uh, to answer your first question, uh, the short answer is no, you really won't see any difference in the kind of photography you're talking about. The OM1 is really a sports action type camera with that bird detect, animal detect, planes, trains, that kind of thing. Uh, definitely, if you're getting into that kind of photography, get the OM-1. You will not regret that. That is money well spent. But for landscape, seascape, you're not going to see any difference in image quality for that kind of photography. The only, time, the only areas that the OM-1 really excels at in image quality is say you're shooting a high ISO image and you need to push it four or five stops. You know, say it's severely underexposed. Uh, then, yes, you will recover more detail with less noise with the OM-1 than, say, the EM-1 Mark II. But that's a very unusual situation. Normally, you are shooting landscapes, seascapes on a tripod. You're at a very low ISO to begin with. And if you need to push or take a high dynamic range scene, it's best to bracket those images anyway so I would not buy the OM1 for landscape seascape type stuff in fact you know I still use my pen F for most of my images uh, for my personal use and I only use the OM1 when I'm going to go do uh, birding and wildlife type photography as for the 12 to 200 lens I don't recommend that lens I know it's a terrific range it's weather sealed uh, and I think the image quality between 12 and 100 is, is acceptable. It's still nowhere near as good as your current 12 to 100. And over 100 millimeters, it's very soft. Uh, and I, I've never liked any of the images that I've ever seen come out of that lens personally. Uh, you know, for eight or 900 bucks, it's not a cheap lens. Uh, I think your money's better spent if you need something on the long end. Uh, a budget choice would be, say, the 75 to 300. You know, it's still compact, has great reach, and has really, it's really pretty sharp, actually, all the way out to 300 millimeters. It's, it's certainly better than the 12 to 200. And um, also, another good option is the 100 to 400 lens. You know, it's much bigger, but it is weather sealed if you need that. And uh, money, no object, you know, the 300 millimeter F4, if you need that kind of reach, weather sealed and unparalleled image quality, uh, very similar uh, to your 12 to 100. So, yeah, forget about the 12 to 200. It's better to keep your 12 to 100 and just crop in if you need to uh, in post processing or 75 to 300 or the 100 to 400 or the 300 F4. All right, the next question here is from Enzo Canizo, and uh, he says, in general, I have both Olympus and Panasonic bodies and lenses. In your opinion, for still photography, would you invest in one or the other? Uh, he currently has the EM1, EM10, EM5, all Mark IIs, and a Panasonic GH3 and GH4. And he's not a professional, but you like to photograph. 
and he has some Nikon DSLRs, etc. Okay, I think the general consensus, and not just me, but for still photography, the Olympus OM system is the preferred choice. And not because of image quality. They both deliver excellent image quality, really pretty much equivalent, right? You're not going to get better images from one camera or the other. But the Olympus and OM system cameras have more photography-related features. Uh, for example, the Pro Capture. Uh, that'll let you pre-buffer and high-speed capture images for like sports action wildlife and capture that in RAW with continuous autofocus. Now I know Panasonic has a similar feature, but it is uh, JPEG only and it's a lower resolution. Uh, we also have the live composite mode, which I'm not sure, I think one of the Panasonics have that, but for the most part, the Panasonic cameras do not have this feature. Uh, and that's really useful for like light painting and you know having a lot of fun. You can do a lot of creative things with that. Uh, and then in the uh, EM1 Mark III, OM5, OM1, they've also have a live ND, so you have a built-in ND filter for long exposures. Uh, it's a digital ND filter. And then uh, we also have the Starry Sky AF. And there's probably a couple other things I can't think of, but you get the idea that. OM Systems is really focused on still photography. And certainly the OM1 has the unparalleled uh, sports action wildlife autofocusing system because it's not only uh, contrast, but it's also phase detect, right? It's a hybrid autofocus system. So you're going to have generally a better experience for still life photography with the OM System Olympus cameras. All right, and that's all I have for today. I hope you found that helpful. If so, maybe consider buying me a coffee or making a donation in the links below. Uh, if you have any questions, again, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll try and get to them in another video. But I appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you again soon.